would like to talk to you today about the characteristics of various herbicides. It's really important to understand the characteristics of herbicides when choosing a product. If you pick the wrong characteristics or wrong herbicide or make an incorrect application, you're going to result in poor control and perhaps even damage to your desirable plants. So let's take a look at the characteristics. We've broken these into four groups. Pre-emergence versus post-emergent, systemic versus contact, selective versus non-selective, and residual versus non-residual. Let's go through each group and explain what we mean. First, pre-emerge herbicides. That means they are applied before the weeds have emerged or appear. And with the, the behavior in these herbicides, they inhibit the growth as weeds germinate. They create a barrier on the soil surface, and as those weed seeds germinate, they hit the barrier and they're controlled. This is our primary method when we control annual grassy weeds, uh, such as in turf grass, ornamental beds, and so forth. And the herbicide typically will persist for several months because the weed seed germination happens over a period of time, not all at one time. So you'd want that herbicide to be there for more than just a, a short period of time. And there you can see the barrier that we're talking about that's formed by these pre-emerge herbicides. If we go to post-emerge, we're saying that, that the weed has germinated, it's above ground, it has foliage above ground, and so we're going to try to kill this weed after it's emerged from the soil. Uh, of course, the plants are going to be best controlled when they're young and actively growing. And we typically think of this method as the primary method to control broadleaf weeds. But care must be taken to avoid injury to any desirable plant. Because if that herbicide gets on the foliage of a desirable plant, there's a good chance it will also cause injury. The other thing we take a look at is the herbicide systemic or a contact. When we talk about systemic, it's also referred to as translocated herbicides. Um, it's going to provide control by moving throughout the plant even when applied to just one part. Now this is very useful in controlling perennial weeds because the herbicide can move to underground roots and stems for total control. And here you see in this illustration we're spraying this dandelion with a systemic herbicide it's going to be absorbed by the foliage and then translocated throughout the plant down to the roots so we can kill that very stubborn tap root that the dandelion has. Now we go to contact herbicide. These are only going to work the plant parts that they touch or come in contact with. Because of that we need very good coverage to be effective. Now, most of these contact herbicides are non-selective they're going to affect nearly every plant that they touch. It's going to require very careful use in either ornamental set settings or when you have desirable plants close by. Uh, they will, again, injure other plants that they come in contact. Here we have an illustration of contact versus systemic. This first slide you see the contact is going to hit the foliage. Let's say this is a weed that we're trying to get until and where it contacts, that's where it's going to stay. We compare that to a systemic, it's going to hit the leaf, but the material, the herbicide, is going to be translocated throughout the plant. So we get better coverage and we get better control because that's going to also be translocated to the roots. The other classification we look at are selective versus non selective herbicides. Selective herbicides only target very specific plant types. In other words, let's say a broadleaf control or a grass control. Uh, the major difference in our weeds are typically broken down by either broadleaf or grassy weed. These type of plants have totally different metabolism so we can select out the, the type of weed we're trying to kill. For example, in this illustration, this graphic, we have dandelion in a home lawn. The dandelion is a broadleaf the home lawn or grasses, so we can use a herbicide that has selectivity for broadleaves but will not damage the grassy weeds. Now when you use a selective herbicide you really need to know 
the type of weed you have, but also the desirable plants that you have. Uh, let's say that you have an ornamental bed and you have some broadleaf weeds coming up, but if the ornamentals are in the broadleaf type uh, uh, plant, you're going to also injure or even kill the desirable plants. So it's very important to understand uh, the type of uh, plants that you have. Are they broadleaf? Are they grass? Or maybe it's even a sedge, something like yellow nut sedge. Uh, so you need to understand the type of weed that you have and the type of desirable plants that you have. When we go to non-selective, basically these herbicides are going to control nearly every plant that comes in contact with. We typically use these where bare ground is needed. Uh, here you see in the uh, photograph, uh, this is a, a, a uh, sidewalk, driveway, and we really just want to control everything. We also use the non-selective herbicides when we try to renovate new planting areas. We, we want to kill everything and then go in and either renovate or put in new planting. So uh, they do control every plant they come in contact with. The other classification we look at is the residual. Is the herbicide a residual herbicide or is it a non-residual? Our residual herbicides stay active in the soil for a very long period of time. Uh, of course, you can have short residual materials and then long mater uh, residual materials. The longer residual materials can actually last up to a year, if not longer, depending upon the rate. Uh, the shorter residual, we typically say six to 10 weeks, uh, is a shorter residual material. Uh, but we do, do not want to use these long-term residuals in areas where you do want the plants to grow. Uh, you know, the exception may be the pre-emerged grass control products have residual control, but they're safe where you put them on the, on the grass areas because the roots of the grass are below the barrier that you're forming with the pre-emerged. But if you try to plant into that barrier, you're going to kill your desirable plant, or let's say you wanted to seed uh, new turf grass seed into that area, that turf grass seed would come in contact with that barrier and also that it could be killed. And here you can see the barrier that we form with these residual materials, in this particular case, crabgrass control. Non-residual do not last very long in the soil, as the name implies. So we end up reapplying the, these herbicides multiple times because of that lack of residual activity. Uh, oftentimes these are used to burn down or get rid of weeds in the area before planting, whether it's a, a lawn area or an ornamental bed, but uh, they're used for burn down to get rid of the weeds. Well, hopefully that helps you understand herbicides better. We went through pre-emerge versus post-emerge systemic versus contact, selective versus non-selective, and finally residual versus non-residual. Hopefully that's a big help to you. Thanks for joining in.